It's the first public safety LTE program in the country, so it's a learning process. And public safety has different requirements than a commercial network because most of the incidents happen in small, confined areas. And what we were doing was testing what the bandwidth was in those small, confined areas. And so I guess the biggest challenge is um, figuring out how many radio sites you really need to cover urban and non-urban areas, and it's going to vary from, from area to area. We're going to end up putting up networks, and then we're going to end up filling in the networks on a capacity-needed basis. You know, the, the applications are a very interesting part of this because you can go down and you can say, okay, I want to do fingerprints, I want to do EMS telemetry, I want to do live video from the scenes, I want to do incident reporting, but until we get the network built, we, we know what a handful of the applications are. But just like when the iPhone came out, you couldn't ask a developer what applications people wanted because they didn't know. This is the same thing. Once we get the networks in place, we're going to have our core applications, but then we're going to have developers who build applications for a specific department or a specific need that we can't even foresee today. So it's going to be a constantly evolving thing. Well, I think the first thing for Europe to understand is it takes a long time to get Spectrum. Everybody puts a dollar value on Spectrum, so you're competing against money for the Treasury. You, ma you need to, what we did, what we finally broke through in the United States was all of public safety, fire, EMS, police, we all came together under a banner organization called the Public Safety Alliance. We then went as one group to talk to the legislatures, and we had to fight for having enough Spectrum. There's a difference between having some LTE spectrum and enough spectrum. The original FCC uh, allocation for public safety was not enough. So we've gone back and said we need 20 megahertz of spectrum for daily use. And they didn't listen to us until we showed up as a very, very unified organization with everybody in the public safety com uh, com uh, community headed for exactly the same objective. This has been fun because we use P25 in the United States, and I've known about Tetra, but I didn't know how pervasive it was. I didn't know how all the ins and outs of its usage and the differences between how public safety uses radio in the United States and how it's used here in Europe. And, and there are a lot of differences, so it's been a real education for me.